Welcome traders to another Tickmill Weekly Market Outlook for week commencing the 29th of November with me Patrick Manley. So starting with the US on Monday we get October pending home sales. Uh, last print minus 2.3%. We're looking for a median estimate of 0.7% uh, on an expected uh, bounce back after September's surprise fall. Uh, we'll also see uh, November Dallas Fed index uh, last out 14.6, looking for a median estimate of 17. Uh, this will provide a timely update on manufacturing in Texas. We'll also get Fed speak. Chair Powell is due to speak along with Williams, Hassan and Bowman. On Tuesday, uh, prints of notes are going to be November Chicago PMI. Last time 68.4, expecting a 67 print. Uh, supply disruptions and Delta are ongoing issues. We are also looking for November Consumer Confidence Index, last out 113.8. Uh, median estimate for this print is 110. Uh, confidence to be held back by Delta concerns. And again, we will have additional uh, Fed speak in terms of Chair Powell and Yellen, who are before a Senate panel. And we'll also hear from Williams and Clarida. On Wednesday, November ADP employment change, last time 571k, looking for a 515k, another strong result is expected. We're also going to receive uh, October construction spending, last out minus 0.5%, looking for a plus 0.5% this time, an expected lift to give strength uh, in terms of the housing demand that we are witnessing in the US. Uh, we'll also get November ISM manufacturing, last out 60.8, looking for a 61 print this time. Manufacturing has been strong despite the supply and Delta concerns. And again, we will have Chair, uh, Fed Chair Powell and uh, Treasury Secretary Yellen. This time on Wednesday, they'll be before the House panel. Coming into Thursday, we look for initial jobless claims. 199 was the last print. Don't have any initial, uh, don't have any estimates for this one. Initial claims are at multi-decade lows though. And then wrapping it all up on Friday, we have the all important November non-farm payrolls last out 531k. Looking for a market median estimate here is 500k, but risks are tilted to the upside. Momentum in employment growth is expected to persist at this stage. We'll also get the employment rate last out 4.6%, market median 4.5%, uh, edging the unemployment rate just that bit lower. We'll get November hourly average earnings last out 0.4%, looking for the same again, really 0.4% wage growth to remain steady given the labor market. We will also get a November ISM non-manufacturing print on Friday, last out 66.7, looking for a 65 here as the Delta headwinds likely to persist. We also get October factory orders, last out 0.2%, looking for a 0.5% print this month uh, as expected to advance further given transport and source uh, is a likely source of volatility there we will also get october durable goods last out 0.5 percent no market median uh, the final release x transport orders point to a solid fourth quarter of investment and uh, wrapping up friday we will hear from uh, Fed member Bullard, who's speaking at a Missouri Bankers Association. So from a technical perspective, the dollar index traded up into the, uh, to test the offers just below the 97 handle. Saw some supply come in late Friday. Now looking for a three-way corrective move to complete into testing the 94.50 from there anticipating a bounce. Uh, really at this stage only would get materially bearish the dollar if we take out the ascending trend line uh, support coming in at around 93.50 and that would suggest that this uh, current corrective phase is complete and the downtrend is resuming but for now we stay focused on this 94.50 test and watching how price responds there. Heading into the Eurozone, let's run through where we're at in terms of data. On Monday, we get November consumer confidence, last time minus 6.8. Persistent inflationary pressures and Delta resurgence are likely to keep the consumer constrained. Uh, we also get November economic confidence, last out 118.6. Looking for a 117.8 print via the market median estimate. Uh, this will present uh, clear headwinds to 
confidence in terms of this resurgence that we've seen in uh, coronavirus concerns over the last few days. On Tuesday, we'll get November CPI percentage year over year, 4.1% last out. Looking for an improvement here, 4.3% inflationary pressures expected to persist really into 2022 now. On Wednesday, we will get November market manufacturing PMIs uh, last out 58.6. Looking for a similar print this month uh, for the final release. And then heading into Thursday, we get the uh, unemployment rate for the Eurozone. Last time, 7.4%. Looking for something similar here. The fall in unemployment expected to become a little bit more gradual now. And then wrapping up on Friday, we get November market services PMI. Last out, 56.6%. Uh, looking for a similar print this month, final release for the month, obviously. And then we get October retail sales. Last print was zero, uh, minus 0.3%. We're looking for a plus 0.3% versus the market median here, uh, set to lift as demand evens out really between goods and services, similar dynamic to what we've seen uh, develop in the US. From a technical perspective, the euro dollar traded into that uh, 112 support zone. Now looking for a three-way corrective move to try and get us back up into this uh, this 115 five, uh, former resistance, uh, sorry, sorry, former support to now act as resistance. Um, really at this stage, only a loss of, uh, of last week's lows at the 111.80 would, uh, would set up a bearish decline uh, to the downside to test that 110 uh, weekly trend line that I referenced in the um, weekly live trade analysis session uh, last Thursday. So for now, we're looking for further upside and see if we can grind it out to, uh, to get a test of that 115 area. In Japan, pretty light in terms of data next week. What have we got? We've got on Wednesday, uh, November Nikkei manufacturing PMIs last out 54.2. And we're likely to see a similar print as the final uh, release for the month. And then really, it's, uh, it's just on Friday, we also get the November Nikkei uh, Japan PMI services, 52.1 expected. And that again is the final release for the month. Uh, dollar yen took a uh, took a beating on Friday, uh, along with the risk aversion that we saw. I'm now looking for a three wave corrective move, anticipating to find resistance back into that 114.50 area, and we're going to look for a test of the major ascending trendline support back into 111.50 is the setup as we head into next week in terms of the dollar yen. Sterling, let's see where we're up to there in terms of data releases. On Monday we get October net mortgage lending. Uh, expect uh, last time was 9.5 billion uh, with the conclusion of the stamp duty break uh, it's likely to partially offset the gains that we saw in September so looking for a slightly softer print there um, then we head into Wednesday in the UK we get November market manufacturing PMIs last print 58.2 expecting something similar it's the final release for the month and then rounding it out on Friday in the UK, we get November market services PMI 58.6. Again, expecting something similar, final print for the month. In terms of the price action with sterling, we have tested into this uh, projected ascend, uh, sorry, descending trend line support um, just above the S3 there. And we're finding, uh, we're finding some demand come into the market. I'm looking for a move back into now test uh, 135 as uh, as resistance from the current levels at this stage a closing breach below last week's low would uh, would set up a deeper corrective move and we could certainly think about 131 to the downside and then into the yearly pivot at 129.18 for now we're watching to see if we can get a confirmation of this uh, reversal attempt to get us back up into that 135 zone and last but not least down under in Australia on Monday, we get uh, third quarter business inventories. Last time, 0.2%. Uh, Looking for a, a flat reading, really, this uh, this month. Inventory rundown is probably associated with the Delta lockdowns that have been witnessed. Um, and then coming into Tuesday, we get the Q3 current account balance. Uh, last out, 20.5 billion. Looking for 29.3 billion up on larger trade surplus and higher export prices. Are, uh, are anticipated to boost that print. We get Q3 net exports uh, last time, uh, minus one, looking for a plus one this time, export 
Volumes uh, should have rebounded off a weak base and import volumes have dipped due to Delta concerns. We also have RBA Deputy Governor Guy de Bell speaking at a panel symposium uh, regarding Indigenous economics. Um, then we head into Wednesday, we get Q3 GDP in Australia. Looking at last time, we saw a 0.7% print. We're actually looking for a decrease here to minus 2.5% on the mar uh, median market estimate. Again, Delta lockdowns have likely uh, impacted the, uh, the GDP print, but uh, disruptions less than anticipated, I think, in terms of uh, the Australian economy. Then we're heading to Thursday, we have October housing finance. Uh, last time out, minus 1.4%. Uh, Looking for a positive 2% print this time as reopening saw a lift in turnover in October. We will also get trade balance data for Australia, last out 12.2 billion. A little bit of a decline here, probably down to 10.8 billion ish. Um, imports have rebounded and export earning pullbacks are likely to continue. And then uh, that wraps out the uh, Australian economic data for next week. So let's take a look at it from a technical perspective. We, uh, as anticipated in uh, some of the uh, daily technical updates that I provide for the Aussie dollar through the Tickmill TradingView account. We took out the trend line, extended lower. We're now testing this uh, support zone 71. Look for a bit of potential for a bit of back and fill here, but ultimately now I'm looking for a breakdown and we, uh, we test the yearly pivot here at 69.84 and then trend line projected descending trend line support coming in at 69.20 before we see a potential for more meaningful bounce. So any pullbacks here and certainly into the uh, Ascending trend line support now to act as resistance in the 7270 will be premium shorting opportunities, but I anticipate that any back and fill is likely to uh, extend lower now at this stage in terms of the Aussie dollar. And that concludes the weekly market outlook for week commencing the 29th of November. As always, traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, most importantly, manage your risk. Until next time, thanks very much. <laughs>